Yep, ready whenever. Make sure. Once you got that in, you're good to go. Yeah, perfect. Mark, uh, congratulations on the victory. Uh, what was this whole experience like getting to come to Toronto, fight someone in their backyard, and, and get a really dominant win? What an incredible experience, man. I flew at Tricky's to the sea. We landed about 12 days ago. As we landed in Toronto, Canada, busy doing our uh, passport checks and shit, he's like, dude, did you see you got a fight? And I'm like, no, what do you mean? Yeah. He's like, look at your phone, go change your message. And my coach literally just sent me, Hello, and it's Sherlock Link to Zachary Powell. And I just replied, yes, sir. Yeah. That's, like, that's my life, man. This is what I do. I've walked like um, uh, basically a thousand miles in pursuit of finding out, like, God, what's happening in my life? Why am I not getting fights? I've went to Dagestan. I've trained there. I've fought in Russia. This is not something I do. It's something I actually love. And mm -hmm. To be able to do it on 12 days notice, to walk away with the 30-27 victory, even though it is on points, even though I know the boss man likes to finish, I'm so damn proud, man. Yeah, and when did you find out uh, Dana White was going to be in attendance? Did you know right away or was it shortly after? Honestly, uh, like I'm not too much of a hype guy. Like, yeah. Even if I see big stars, it's like I can, if I recognize you, I recognize you, but there's not like a, a big fanboy hype behind me. So. A few of my mates were like, dude, Dana White's going to be there. And I'm like, yo, 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 you know, like I'm sure he's had a lot of MMA events. And then I checked, it's actually, it's legit. Yeah. I'm called Dana White, uh, the, well, what can you say, the Don of MMA yeah. Yeah. is going to be at my fight watching me perform. And dude, that was, that was honestly something for me to say, you know what, even though it is 10 days notice, I'm going to have to give 110% out there. How much confidence did you have? I know, again, it was a short notice fight, but just getting to work with Drickus in his camp, preparing for the biggest fight of his life for the UFC middleweight title. Like, how much confidence does that give you getting to work with him going into a fight like this? All the confidence in the world. Drickus Triplessy is not just a good athlete, he's an absolute gentleman. And I promise you, like I've said, I've been all over the world. Me personally, I fought some strong guys. I've trained with some tough, strong guys in Dagestan. No one comes close to you. So I'm excited to see Saturday night what he's going to bring to the table and what kind of spectacular fashion he's going to finish that fight. And just rewinding a little bit, his win over Whitaker last year, how much did that inspire the entire team? Because he was counted out heavily in that fight and he was, I think, the only, he was just the second fighter at middleweight to finish Robert Whitaker. It was a monumental win and that's why he got the title shot. I don't want to sound like a, you know, repetitive flop, but yeah. uh, our team, we weren't shocked at the least. Yeah. We, we have a thing, and I really hope I'm not talking outside of the bedroom now, but we have a thing called double distance, which means if you're fighting for 15 minutes, coach is going to put you through 30 minutes plus with a new guy every minute, minute and a half, and there's no mercy, dude. Coach walks in many times in the week and he says, 10k bouncy, first guy to drop someone. Oh, you guys want to mess around today? It's 20k now. Oh, no one's dropped yet. It's 30k. So, like, my point is, we weren't shocked when Tricky won against uh, Whitaker, and it won't be a shock when he becomes a middleweight champion. And just last one for me, huge win regardless of what happens, if, you know, you get the contract or not. Like, like where do you, like, just going and having this experience and taking it on short notice, like, this is probably going to be a really big opportunity for you going forward, getting a victory like this. 100% brother, I've been putting together a little list of rules that I've like picked up through life and one of those rules I learned while I was walking to Cape Town from Johannesburg and that is <laughs> and that is essentially that the journey is the destination. This week and a half that I spent here with Tricky Suplicy, that I spent in the UFC hotel, that I spent preparing for this last minute fight, this time that I'm spending talking to you guys. This is the destination. This is the reason I'm alive. I don't have to go home tonight and wonder, what is my purpose in life? <laughs> Dude, I'm living it. This is my purpose and I love it. Now, I got to well, say, how happy were you with your performance? I'm not happy at all, to be honest with you. Like I said, I am a while to wait. I took this fight on extremely short notice. I have been a bit of a punching bag for Trickers to see building up to his fight. So I think out of 10, I might have performed at a 7 of what I could offer, but I'm so proud, you know, we, we're in the back now, we finished our, we finished our team, team greeting with a prayer, 
and our coach actually mentioned, Jesse, how ungrateful are we? We just won 30-27 and none of us are happy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I'm happy I won, but there's a certain way you want to do it in front of the boss. Exactly. And what's next for you? My brother, whatever's next, let it come. If it's UFC, I'll be through the moon. If it's another title defense in Africa, if it's another one in, UFC, uh, in UAE, if it's in Russia, if it's outside here tonight for some money. Like, you know, I love fighting, dude. Exactly. I love fighting. Like, even on my worst days, I wake up, I drag my ass to the gym. Quick story, man. After my title fight four weeks ago in December, like, or let's say five, six weeks ago now, sorry, 7th of December. I cut to 77, I didn't have the greatest rehydration, I, re I cut from about 87 kilos. I rehydrated back to 84, 85, not to my fullest potential, 4 to 1, that's regardless. The next week, Drikas is still in camp, man. I dropped back to 81 kilos, like not healthy, dude, like I was going through a lot of shit. I was still on the mat, dude. I was weighing like four, five, six kilos less than I should. I was like probably deadly ill. But I'm on the mats helping my brother for the biggest part of his life. This is what, you know, like many people do MMA. I love it. And everyone at CIT is the same. Now last for me, predictions for tomorrow, main event. DDP in phenomenal style, brother. Like I said, you, like the world will still get to know the gentleman that he is, but me personally, I experienced it with the first Wetzika fight. I was his plus one back then. This time, same thing around. He's, he's an absolute gentleman, he's an absolute beast, and I, honestly, I can't wait for his middleweight reign. Mark, obviously, uh, you've traveled around the world. You said you fought in your home country of South Africa. You're a champion there. You fought in Abu Dhabi. What was the experience like here fighting in Canada? Dude, okay, <laughs> let, me, let, let me tell you guys like this. We just landed. We just landed. I'm a very vibey kind of person. You know, you feel the vibe. You check the vibe. And I don't know what it was, I told Ricky, dude, I think except for South Africa, this is my favorite place in the world. Okay, but it doesn't make sense because it's piss cool, you can't go outside. So I've been thinking, like, what is it about this place? And I honestly think it's the Canadians, man. It's the Canadian people that I love so much. They, they're very close to us South Africans in their mannerisms, in their, in their, like, they're friendly, but they have their own character. They'll also tell you to F right off if they have to, but for the most part, I think I love Canadians, man. <laughs> <laughs> Canadians are cool, dude. Um, as well, obviously you said you last fought in the EFC back in December. Now make the quick turnaround. Would you like to take a little bit more time off just to get the body back before you come back to the cage? Okay, quick story time. <laughs> <laughs> we love it. <laughs> I've got a friend nagging me. I've never been to Florida. I James boy, let's change your flight. Let's go to Florida for two days on me. Let's experience it. From there you go and you carry on with your life. On it, like I would love to do that, bro. But at the same time, I'm thinking that's about a week that it's going to put me out of training. Right. I want to get back to the boys. I want to get back into routine. This routine, this fighting, this MMA is something that's like honestly, it's kept me grounded in life, bro. It's kept my head on straight. It's kept me out of some serious shit. Like honestly, I think I would have been in jail or dead if I didn't have this. And I think the short answer is I want to get back, bro. I want to get back into training. I want to get that next fight, like, last minute fights are honestly some of my best performances, even though I'm not happy with the performance, a 30-27 win is still good, you don't see that every day, so the short answer is maybe you see me in Florida, maybe you don't, but as soon as I touch base in South Africa, I'm back in camp and I'm ready to fight as soon as February, March again, bro. I need to build this record as big as I can. And my last thing for you, obviously 2023 ended big for South Africa with them winning the Rugby World Cup. Drikas has now got his title fight tomorrow. And what is the, look, the landscape looking like, not just for South African sports right now, this seems like the boom time for South African MMA. Brother, this is, this is something the world needs to understand. It's like, this is the world, this is the like, sports and you know, movies and entertainment and, it, and Africa is right here, right down here. We can compete on every level, but that 20 hour flight, that 24 hour flight puts us out a lot of times. You can't get a 24 hour, 48 hour notice flight in the UFC because it's gonna take you way longer than that to get there. So the, the short answer to your question is, we've always been on that level, brother. We, I think we, the only nation to win the World Cup four times. 
You know, that says something. It says something about our character. It says something about our demeanor. And it certainly says something about our folk. Absolutely. Well, congrats on the win, Mark. Thank you, my brother. <laughs> come on. Come on. If I had a drink, I'd give it to you. <laughs> yeah. Don't tease me. <laughs>